Thank you, Representative Curry. Um, Representative Fialo. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I um, following on uh, Rep. Curry's uh, clarification, I, if I understand this, normal process for bills is that, particularly with a large fiscal note, um, that they go before appropriations. But in this instance, on quite a few of the education bills before us today, we are saying that we're JFing them to the floor and not to approves because it is going to get a more thorough fiscal analysis. Is that what we're saying? Because normally the process is it goes to probes, but now we're saying it's going to the floor because it will be more thoroughly studied. <laughs> is that what we're, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chair? Hey, thank you. Um, I appreciate that question, Kim, uh, excuse me, Representative Fiorello, because um, oftentimes folks don't really have a full understanding of the process by which bills um, follow when they come out of committee. Um, so I'll, I'll take off my ed committee hat and I'll throw on, um, I actually chair the house screening uh, for our side of the aisle and work closely with uh, Representative Verbimbis and, and her team, making sure that bills keep moving along throughout session. And one of the things that we discuss is that typically anything, there's a threshold that we determine that bills are automatically sent over to appropriations or finance, depending on the financial implications. So it is not uncommon for bills to simply go to the floor to then be sent over to either of those money committees. It is simply a decision of the leadership of each respective committee as to whether or not they want to send it to the floor or to appropriations. So th there's no uh, clear rule stating that it's the norm or or anything like that, that it happens one way or the other. Okay, um, thank you, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, but that's fine. I understand that it's not, you're make, possibly making the case that it's not necessarily normal or not. However, um, I do think that there is the practice that it does go to approves. And, um, and in and quite a few of these, it does say go to approves, but we're changing it to now go to the floor. And I just wanna make a point for the record that that is something that I'm noticing. Um, but this bill, is it correct to understand that this, that uh, 5283 is essentially 948 uh, and uh, with some tweaks. And so to that point, um, this bill does continue. And in fact, in the o OFA report, it explicitly says, and I was so grateful for the clarity of the OFA report that we requested last year to really understand not only the financial implications, but really the mechanics of what we're doing here right now. And this clarity, I think, is really important for um, all citizens, residents, parents, whoever's watching to understand. But it says here, keeping students attending magnet schools and uh, in home in a home district's ECS count. So we are keeping students attending magnet schools in the home district's ECS count continues under this bill 5283, i.e. the state is paying for some students twice. This comes in page 82 of the OFA report. Is that a true and correct characterization of what 85283 is doing? Representative Curry. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Representative Curry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yep, so this is what folks colloquially like to refer to as double funding. Um, and so double funding is current law, it's law now, um, and that would go unchanged uh, through this bill. Uh, if folks are interested in completely dismantling the system and starting from scratch, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but we are simply building off of what is current law and not changing that ECS status as of now. Thank you uh, for that answer. Um, so I, I don't think it's great public policy, especially when it deals with schools to keep piling on a uh, layer after layer of uh, policy that isn't correct, but especially as it, as it pertains to how much we are spending per child because that data point of um, cost per child, you know, the funding amount per child is so important. And I think it is um, a more honest system that if we pay, if we, if the people of Connecticut are funding a higher amount to these cities, they should know. They should know that there is a, there is a real, they should know the real amount that is going. 
um, to the students. And I have to say the, the clarity of the OFA report, why it's so important is that before it was not clear, uh, before proponents who were looking for money follows a child were sometimes told, what double funding are you speaking of? But now the understanding of double funding, what we said colloquially called double funding, well, at least that is out in the open and it's true and accepted knowledge. And I think that is progress, but we can't continue to do what we now acknowledge we are doing. We are paying for children to sit in school seats. We're paying for seats where the children are not. That is not an honest system. I think we want to be more accurate in our accounting and honest about how much money is going to all of the schools. And then let's be really accountable. How much do they really get? And how much are these children improving in their education? And, and in that clear formula, 52A3 really fails. For all the good stuff that might be in 52A3, there is an essential dishonesty about this bill that I cannot support. And I really urge everyone here, we talk about doing the hard work, but part of the hard work sometimes is, is a simple honesty. And we have a clear view here that we are continuing a system of double funding, of paying twice for some students. And I think many of us would be okay to support the students as they are needed, but we should have an honest accounting of it. Uh, for those reasons, Mr. Chair, I cannot support uh, 5283. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Fiorello. Um, Representative Curry, did you have a comment? Yes, please. Um, I will respect the comments of the good representative simply because she holds that office as well. Um, to claim that there was dishonesty uh, through this process, I think is a bit of a stretch. Uh, we have always been very clear that uh, the system is what it currently is and that we were building off of what the current system was. Uh, if we were to um, remove what is referred to as double funding, uh, just so folks fully understand, it's, it's about a hundred million dollar hit to our, uh, especially our alliance districts in which those districts find themselves some of the most under-resourced and underfunded. And so to pull those monies out uh, would uh, be an egregious move by this legislature uh, because we know that those systems are still standing uh, just because uh, you have a group of children throughout K through 12 who are being moved over to magnets and charters and VOAG schools and tech schools. All of that, you, you, you have students who are still in those buildings with the same operational costs. Uh, so there's more to that conversation than kind of the simple way in which it was just put. But I just want to ensure that folks fully understand that there is no dishonesty occurring around this bill. We have been very open and honest, uh, sometimes too honest and working too hard, uh, some might say. Uh, but again, I appreciate the comments by uh, the good representative and hope we can continue that conversation. Thank, thank you, Representative Curry. Um, Senator Winfield. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I just, I'm, I'm over in judiciary, so I just came in and heard a little bit of the, of the last conversation. Um, I think Representative Curry has done an amazing job of explaining uh, all aspects of this, including why the bill's going to the floor. I just wanted to uh, say that I think it is a very uh, smart decision to be sending the bill to the floor. The legislature has a lot of tools in its uh, possession to be able to continue conversations, particularly the, the most uh, important conversations we have. The Appropriations Committee is, as all of the committees are, coming to uh, the end of its process, uh, sending a bill directly to appropriations now, I think, jeopardizes it. And I think this conversation is too important uh, to put into jeopardy. That bill will see itself in appropriations. That will happen. We know that. Um, but sending it to the floor uh, allows for it not to be there tomorrow, right? Uh, and, and I think as a legislature, given the level of importance of this conversation, uh, it's incumbent upon us to make sure that the, the Appropriations Committee gets it in a, at, a, at a point where it can actually have a conversation and not simply uh, stop the bill because they don't have time because they have bills that are uh, already in that committee uh, and can't fit this in. So I, I just want to add my voice to um, Representative Curry's uh, as someone who sat on screening for 13 years uh, and, and recognizes the importance of um, that committee sometimes in making sure that these conversations can, can continue. Thank you. 
Thank you, Senator Winfield. Um, Representative Johnson. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Representative Curry, for your great explanation of the problems that Alliance districts face uh, and have faced ever since Lowell Weicker was the governor in terms of being severely underfunded. And my district, a district of 24,000 people, the very high minority population with a group of students, highest population of students who have a home language that is not English, that was never properly funded. Losing 10 million a year over these last several years has really, really hurt my students. And so having the good uh, you know, opportunity to be able to equalize access to the education cost sharing grant, to make sure that we don't underfund uh, uh, classrooms uh, because one student goes to a magnet school and, and severely exacerbate the underfunding that exists now. There is no double funding really. Uh, what's happening here is trying to work our way carefully and slowly to make sure that we have equal opportunity for every student in our state. So thank you everyone for this. And uh, I can't tell you how uh, appreciative I am uh, having been somebody who has been working very hard in supporting uh, this change, which must happen in order for us to uh, have, a, have a state of Connecticut that provides for everybody and all the little ones uh, growing up so that they can go uh, and move forward into higher education. So uh, thank you again uh, for all the great work and I look forward to seeing this bill and the equalization. We've had litigation after litigation in the state. First, we had uh, the uh, Horton versus Meskel that said we were supposed to have equalized uh, uh, education cost sharing. And then we went from that to Chef versus O'Neill that created our magnet schools uh, to make sure that the, at least the Hartford area had access to uh, more integration. From there, we went to the Connecticut Coalition for Justice and Education Funding, uh, which brought out in litigation uh, all the unfairness and all the disparities between the uh, wealthier communities and the, and the Alliance District communities, which are generally lower income populations and uh, communities of black and brown people with language differences. So I am, again, very, very pleased and honored to be able to support this legislation. And there is no double funding here at all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Representative Johnson. Um, Representative Felipe. I think Rep. Leeper is going for the first time. She has her hand up. Um, Representative Leeper. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Rep. Felipe. I just want to make a quick point. Um, while I'm in strong support of this proposal, and for many of the same reasons I was last year, I will spare all of those points most of you likely heard last year and just remind um, this committee that the traditional home district, or what is often referred to as the nexus district, still bears all of the fiscal responsibility for their children who are enrolled in charters or magnets or some of the our untraditional neighborhood public schools when it comes to uh, special ed testing and evaluations as well as special education services so those uh expenses still rest with the nexus district even when children are enrolled in a magnet or charter so i think it's really important that that be a part of this conversation as we flesh out what exactly it means to be double funded thank you mr chair thank you representative leeper um representative felipe uh thank you mr chair and just to add on to representative leeper uh transportation is also something that the sending district has to pay for um, it's it's a reason why it would be crippling to end this practice of double funding, whether you agree with it or not. Right now, it's current law, and the fact that it's current law uh, means that if we were to change it, we need to know what is next, and we do not have the answer for that. So to not leave it in, in current law as it is would be crippling for sending districts, for districts uh, that have charter schools like mine. It's it's hard for us to, to swallow that pill. And right now there's no solution otherwise, but that is not a change to current law. That is leaving current law as it is. And one thing I did want to say is, as you know, Representative Curry and I are our strongest proponents of this bill. He is the chair of screening. I sit on screening as well as being a subcommittee chair for early for early and childhood education in approach. This will have conversations that in, involve our approach chairs 
We are not trying to keep them out of the process. As Senator Winfield alluded to, we're just trying to keep the bill alive. We're trying to make sure that we can have these conversations as we go forward and not put it in these last few days of JF, uh, of you know, JF for approps. We want to make sure that it has that larger conversation. So we are committed to doing that. Me as, as chair of that subcommittee, as long, along with the senator who is the chair of this committee, and uh, Representative Curry. Thank you, Representative Felipe, for the second time. Um, Representative Fiorello for the second time. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for acknowledging me for the second time. So I just want to clarify on double funding. It certainly is not uh, something that I made up, but it was in the OFA report. And that's why I am so grateful for uh, the, the clarity that that report brought. But what it is, is that the state ECS funding has all of those formulas that we know. It's very complicated. In fact, our state probably has one of the most complicated education funding formulas in the country. But there's an amount that's set for the district school per need, whatever the district may be. So for example, in the city of Hartford, the money is sent for the count that they have of the district children. That money is accounted for those children. At the same time, there are children who live in that district who leave that district to go to magnet schools or charter schools or vote ag schools or vote uh, tech schools. We have some choice schools in our state, thankfully. They leave to go there and a different pot of money goes to those schools. What I'm saying is that those children who left their district school to go to the other school, that money that was allotted to them in their district school is still there. They're not there anymore. This child is not there anymore, but the money is still there. So there has to be a truth that parents can acknowledge. I, I think parents really want to know. So now the district school. So there's two problems. One is the, the children who are at these other magnet schools, the amount of money that they're getting is often less than what is at the district school. So there was a, a check that was sent to the district that the child is not at. That should really be with that child's education, but a smaller amount is sent to the school that the child's actually going to. So now for the parents who are at the district school, how much funding are they being given for their child's education? I think they really want to know. And so I think what's going to what we're going to find out, which we know has been spoken in this committee. And the and, and the point is, is that money is not always the solution. We keep saying money is a solution, and I have heard the chairman of this committee say definitively to all of us here that it's not more money that delivers a better education. But right now, we are paying for, for seats that the children are not in. So then what I would like to know for the parents in the district is there's going to be a reckoning for these parents that their children are getting a poor education. The proficiency in English language and proficiency in math, as, the, as there, it is showing, is really low. And so these parents, their students are getting more money than we allot for them, than is honestly allotted for them. And yet the proficiency in these, th these scores are so low. So the question is why? And that is fundamentally what we have to fix. But this bill does not address that. This is a keep the double funding, pretend it's not happening, lie to the taxpayer, because the taxpayer really is not getting an honest assessment on where their money is going. And there is a total lack of accountability for our education system. And I, I believe there's a real disservice to the students and the parents. So I just wanted to clarify that double funding is happening. It is real. It impacts 40,000 students who go to the magnet schools. 40,000 seats are being double funded. And that amounts to about $300 million. What could we be doing to improve education with the $300 million that is just stuck in this system and we're not looking to fix it? That is a legitimate question parents should be asking. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for the second time. Thank, Thank you, you, Representative Pierlo. Um, Representative Wielander. Uh, if I might add a comment oh. back in to the response to that, Mr. Chair. Representative Curry. Thank you. Uh, I think it's just important to point out 
Um, when we start claiming that people are not being truthful or honest, I think we've crossed a line unless you can actually show. So for someone to go out here and just simply say something that's going to maybe get you a few more Facebook likes is completely irresponsible for all parents, regardless of where they send their children. So I would just like to remind everyone listening and those on this committee that we are happy to sit down with anyone everywhere to have this conversation and to ensure that they understand what this means and what this doesn't mean for a number of districts that they may have never stepped foot in before. We come to the legislature with a number of different vantage points, and it's important that we take the time and opportunity to fully embrace and understand that which we do not know. And so I welcome anyone to take that opportunity to learn a little bit more about what is happening throughout our state. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Um, Representative Wheelander, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sum I'm a, we're gonna we're gonna have to move this debate along. And I just want to sum it up with a couple words. Representative Wheelander. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I actually th would like to just echo, I think, some of the comments that Representative Curry um just made the my colleague just made. Um, and also just point out that we need to be, and again, I'm, I may be echoing earlier and previous days uh, conversations with that Representative Curry made that, and a lot of us share, that we need to be very careful about the language that we use and that referring to schools as failing um, and equating all types of success with test scores. I think we are all here to have real honest conversations. And even though we may, as I have concerns about many bills, um, maybe we may have concerns, we need to move forward with, with honesty. And um, I look forward to continuing these discussions. Thank you for your time, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Wielander. Uh, Representative McCarty. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And as we end the discussion on this bill, I would just like to bring back that we're all, we all need to be united. This is for our school children in the state. We have to work all together. We may have varying opinions, but I do find it necessary to say that I don't think the Department of Education, the Education Committee, and all those that are working to improve education for our students have never worked harder. And I have faith in re and that our students with the appropriate resources in place, that they will have resilience, that we are improving not only the test scores, but the social emotional well-being of our students by all the good proposals that we see out here. I, for one, also align myself with the comments made earlier that the sending districts do have extra costs that need to be taken into account with special ed, with transportation. So I just want to clear that up. No one's trying to be uh, dishonest in any way whatsoever. Uh, and it's why I'm particularly pleased to see in this proposal that there is a task force. And the task force is comprised of all the professionals that work with our children on a daily basis. And that task force will go into effect if this proposal in whatever uh, condition it ends up going forward. That task force will address many of the concerns that we heard today and that we will be able to look at the funding sources and evaluation and have those voices at the table. So I, I just wanna end this on a po positive note no matter how the committee votes, yes, up or down, that I hope we're all here for those reasons to do what is absolutely best for our children in the state of Connecticut. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Representative um, McCarty. Thank you so much. Um, Senator Berthel. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, just for clarification, uh, I appreciate this debate. I think this is, um, this is important for us as leaders on the Education Committee. I do want to make one point, and I, and I think that uh, this is a very important piece of distinction here. Um, and I'm going to speak for Representative Fiorello. I do not believe that she called any individual dishonest, okay? Uh, let's be clear on that. I think she was referencing that the system may have some faults in it and that we are, in, we are empowered and charged to address faults that are within the system. So, uh, and uh, I, I just want to make sure that we're clear on that. I don't think anyone intends, despite how, uh, how 
heated we can get, how passionate we are. We're all here for the same reason. We all believe on this committee. And I've said, Bobby, you know I've said this a hundred times in front of you, Doug. We are the best committee in the building. We have the most important job of any committee in this legislature. Forget appropriations, finance, judiciary, all of that. We are in charge of making sure that our children have the best opportunity, the next generation. So I just want to be on record of supporting uh, that. What I, I, I can feel Representative Fierro's passion for what she was trying to uh, bring out. I just want to make sure we're clear that she was not looking or intending to offend any individual. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, um, Senator Berthel. And I, I, I just wanted to add um, that this piece of legislation is going to be so important um, for everyone in the state of Connecticut. And I look at it um, for how important it will be for the city of New Britain. Um, constantly, we'll get administrators and teachers and um, parents ask me, when are we going to get the funding that we need to improve our schools in the city of New Britain. So, you know, comments were made that funding is not everything, and that's absolutely true. That's why this task force is going to be key in this legislation, so that when this, when we provide the additional dollars to each one of these um, cities and towns, that it is going into the key areas where we need to improve. Um, we, I hear constantly about the social emotional aspect of what's going on in our in our schools. And so I would expect that with the um, ARPA funds that the school districts received um, presently, um, and um, many of them hired um, additional counselors and social workers, I would expect that that would continue in order to help our kids um, that are going through um, many, many issues um, that the pandemic absolutely brought on. Um, so I am in full support of this legislation, and I hope that my colleagues um, vote yes on this legislation so we can move it onto the House floor. Um, Senator McCarry. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> well, I want to say that I've been on this committee for 16 years, and this is the most packed, one of the most, I'll say the most, but one of the most impactful, emotional experience and things I've heard since I've been elected office. And I'm glad we're having this conversation. It's so important. And everything I've heard out of every person in my life with the last 30 minutes, everything what everyone said was absolutely true on both sides. What Representative Curry was saying, the, it was factual. What Felipe will say is factual. What Fiorella will say is factual. What she is saying is actually true. Everything what everyone said was dead on. So why I say education, this committee is so important, because we can have these debates and intelligence debates, but at the end of the day, come to a solution. Now, in my in my in my comments and, and, and Fiorello, I, I didn't hear you call anyone in person this time. Your, your reflection, she was talking about a system that is not right by her, the way she's seeing it. So I appreciate your argument, um, your passion for it, and you're and your, your willing to want to do something about it. Let, let, my, my comment is about not this, this. Last year, with Representative Kirk Hansen, I was an absolutely no, because there were so many holes that I don't know if they intentionally did not understand what was going on, because I, I, as soon as I saw it, it was like, I was like, absolutely no. However, his, and him and the other, Felipe, and his organization did radiations, radiations, and it got to a point, they listened to everyone's concern, including mine, including all the other advocates. And they got a piece of legislation, honestly, that I can wrap my hands around. I can actually support this legislation. I don't know exactly how much it's going to cost, but the idea of what they're trying to do makes sense. Is this the best tool? No. And, and I keep hearing money is not everything. You're absolutely right. 
It's not just money, but because it's not just money that can prove outcomes, we need accountability. Because the last thing you know, if anybody knows, I'm not interested in spending more money into a system that doesn't work. And that's what we always done. So the one piece of this legislation that I like the most is the accountability task force. Okay. It's the accountability we're gonna have. We talk about being accountable to schools, we got accountability resources, and we have an opportunity to speak to how we want those dollars spent, what areas of education we want to spend. And that's the good thing about this accountability task force. So process-wise, yes, we know this is supposed to go to appropriation immediately. But Gary and I, we all know this. If you do that, it's not gonna, it's, we're, they're at the end of their tunnel. They, they can't find another $300 million right now. So bringing it to the floor makes sense. It makes sense for so many reasons because it gives us the opportunity to clean up any other things that might be that we miss before it comes to the floor. I don't know what the price tag is, but I'll say this. This gives us an opportunity to have a robust discussion about how we fund schools, treat children the same, hold ourselves accountable. So I ask my colleagues to support the legislation. Let it bring it, let it go to the floor. Give us some time to clean up any things that are not there. Be respectful of each other like we have been, even though it's been a very passionate debate. Everyone says something that was absolutely right. And let's move this on.